And welcome back to our continued coverage of the TIA 2015 Network of the Future Conference. Joining us now is the FCC Commissioner Mignon Clyburn. And Mignon, welcome. Thank you. My it's pleasure. A, well, it's a real pleasure to have you on our stage. Um, I know you just came off a keynote address at the TIA 2015 Network of the Future Conference. What was that experience like? Well, it was an affirmation for me that uh, we're in a time of disruption and how we react to that disruptive change, these opportunities that it brings, uh, that will make the difference as to whether or not, from my point of view, regulatory policies will enable or stand in the way. And I want to be an enabler of opportunities. Mignon, I want to get your, um, your opinion, your sentiments about um, a couple of historic uh, decisions that were made uh, just recently, one on net neutrality, of course, and the other one, uh, we just came off a record uh, spectrum auction, auction of the AWS 3 spectrum. Um, but before I get that opinion from you, I want to read a blog quote that you wrote um, about this time last year, and I'm going to read this right off my page. It says, what I took away from our discussion was the realization that today's media universe can no longer be viewed with myopic lenses and historic silos, and that the demarcation between the over-the-air cable, internet, and satellite broadcasting markets uh, are makers, erstwhile legacy distinctions, much harder to maintain. What did you mean by that? It's a recognition that content is king. I'm not sure who said that, but it is so appropriate right now. People are less hung up on what the platform is. You know, how you view, it depends on what's convenient for you. But what is driving all of this is the content. And it's a recognition that um, that is the driver and what we can do to be enablers of all types of platforms, regardless um, of, who, of what they are, ensuring that individuals have the opportunity to choose and it's accessible, that's, uh, you know, that is a recognition of that. But I know what's driving, um, you know, all of these devices. I know what's driving uh, spectral use. And it's, uh, it's coming to terms with that. And what do we do from a regulatory standpoint to further enable uh, those opportunities for all? Now, uh, one of your primary initiatives, and it's been like this for quite some time, is Lifeline. Of course, Lifeline started all the way back in 1985. It provides discount phone services to low-income consumers. Um, how has that initiative, how has Lifeline evolved since 1985? A lot of people want to concentrate on some of the recent history, which has not been the most positive. But what I can say to you, there are millions of people who could not afford, afford basic phone service that were connected that had opportunities to call 911, that had opportunities to get and secure a job, to keep in touch with their loved ones, to ensure that, uh, that there's, they could answer a question if something came from school. Because of the Lifeline program, currently over 12 million people who could not afford a service are taking advantage of this program. What it needs right now is a total reboot and total overhaul because right now it only supports voice service. You and I both know that it takes more than that. It takes connectivity, it takes broadband, it takes high-speed internet to be a connected and engaged individual in this 21st century America. So what I am pushing is a reform program. Not the 30-year-old program, but a program that will meet the current affordability, broadband, communication needs of, of Americans who are currently in need, and that is my priority for this summer. Another one of your priorities, Mignon, is uh, greater diversity in the tech industry. As you may very well know, African American women uh, receive less than 1% of the financing venture capital funds that are provided each and every year. Uh, is this a so slow crawl in, in creating this diversity in the tech industry? It is a recognition that this has to change. And I think if we take the same type of outlook in and, and drive uh, that Silicon Valley and Silicon Hill and all of the other Silicons have taken to build their businesses, to expand and to grow. If we take that same template and transport it into diversity and inclusion uh, and more opportunities for all, then we won't have this conversation next year. I just think that we have the opportunity to start at the top to uh, look at the boards of these companies and diversify there. I think we have an opportunity to challenge those um, who hold the purse strings, those angel investors, or the other investors to say, look at these ideas and look at these you know, individuals and what 
they are attempting to do to enable and improve communities and lives. So we haven't scratched the surface. I am very I'm happy about some of the initiatives that we've been hearing about. That needs to continue and to build. We cannot just check one or two blocks and say, okay, we've done it. This will be a continual uh, investment and engagement of, of opportunities, and I will do everything in my power to be a positive force to change there. Commissioner Clyburn, again, another initiative is um, crossing the digital divide. This is still a problem, getting broadband to all corners of this country. Um, how does the Connect to Compete program fall, fall in place in facilitating that? Well, it recognizes that we can build the infrastructure, but that is only one half of it. If there is not a affordability by way of opportunity, if, if I cannot afford to sign on, one third of our citizens are not connected at home. Many of those who are not connected said affordability is an issue. If we do not address that, then we run the risk of bridging, building technology bridges to nowhere. So what we have to come to terms with is not just about infrastructure, it is about access to products and services. So part of the challenge and part of the charge is how can uh, TIA members and the like influence and have more uh, input when it comes to more affordable products or services, devices? What can we do? Um, can we do you know, recycling of smartphones? What are the types of things? All of the conversations need, all of the conversation needs to be on the table and focus on where the gaps are. And the gaps are truly with the most vulnerable, those who are economically um, vulnerable and those 50 million Americans who have varied degrees of uh, disabilities. And so we need to concentrate on where the need is the greatest, where I think the return by way of technology adoption would be the greatest, and what can we do to bridge those gaps. And that's going to be definitely a part of Lifeline and a part of uh, all of the other programs that will be either means tested or recognizing that we have critical to divides that we need to uh, bridge. Commissioner, of course, we're sitting uh, on uh, in the TI 2015 Network of the Future conference venue. Um, we're in the third day of the three-day conference uh, called Policy Day. That would be day. the last day. That would be the last day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Okay. laughs> um, what is the value of having uh, an FCC commissioner like yourself, like Commissioner O'Reilly here for our attendees? What's the takeaway for them? I think oftentimes members do not engage in Washington, D.C. They don't, they don't have the opportunity to speak up close and personal um, to regulators. This might be a small part of their business, but it's a significant part of their business. The regulatory landscape of if there are any major changes would trickle down in terms of their business model. So I think it's important for us to understand, get to know each other, and recognize that this is a public-private partnership that could work to the benefit uh, of all. I want more people connected and enabled, and, and they want, uh, members want people uh, connected and enabled, and I think that is a mutually beneficial path that we need to continue to explore, how we can work together uh, to uh, ensure both of our goals, which I think are congruent. Commissioner Clyburn, it's a real pleasure to have you here again. I hope you don't mind. Earlier I referred to you by your first name. There's no problem with that. We're okay. All right, I, I appreciate it. I won't find you for that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Nice having you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. And for all of our coverage of TIA 2015, Network of the Future, please log on to tianow.org. So long.